Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 here on our 2020 Volvo XC90. Now, platform style, style racks are going to be a great way of transporting your bikes in a clean and nice looking way, as well as being super effective of not having any kind of movement on the rack as you are getting a lot of securance on there. The Sherpa does an excellent job with that. As you can see, we do have a nice ratcheting arm system on our wheel at the front. That's going to do a great job making sure we have a nice stable platform here. Now, it is going to look very stylish as you can see doing it as well. We do have those nice little copper accents in here today on our Sherpa. However, this does come in a variety of cover colors. It does have a black option and a pearl. So depending on what you guys want or how your Volvo is looking, you can get the bike rack that is going to be matching our style. However, the style is not where it ends. It definitely is a very reliable rack. Taking a look at the platform, you can see it is going to be very sturdy, very dependable. On the inside here, we have some nice little rotating cradles. That's going to make it a little versatile for those different bike lengths, as you can see. Now, it's definitely not going to be the longest bike out there, or rack, I should say, to actually hold on our bigger bikes. You can see I have a, somewhat of a smaller subset. does make it nice and compact for ourselves on our bikes, though. However, and on the back of the vehicle, I should say, the arm itself works very, very well. Ratchets, no problem. As we go down here, won't be popping up. And because we do have this ratcheting arm system and we do have a tire hold maneuver actually holding on to our bikes, what makes it great for is these carbon frame bikes. They are going to be lightweight. And however, if you do have any kind of frame contact, it's very, very easy to warp that frame and cause damage. So these tire holds are an excellent option to start transporting our carbon frame bikes. Talking about the options though, with a 40 pound capacity, we shouldn't have too much trouble getting most of our standard and mountain bikes up on here. However, that 40 pounds is really gonna start pushing it, especially as you get into those bigger, heavier bikes and especially those e-bikes. So if you are looking away of getting some of those heavier bikes while still keeping this style of look, the Kuat Envy is still an excellent option for us if you are looking for a little bit higher weight capacity, but still keeping that nice stylish look. Another great thing about the platform itself too, as you can see, it does have an integrated core here to start locking our cable in. So all I have to do is take the included cable through both of our bikes, stick it in right here, and that way our entire bikes will be secured to our platform. Now that will be key to like to our hitch lock that we'll break down later in the video. One great thing about it as well, too, we do have a tilting capability while our bike is on here. Now, that's one of the biggest kind of advantages of platform style racks, especially if we're hanging style. We don't have to end up taking all of our bikes off, and the Sherpa does it excellently so. On the inside here, you're going to see this little lever system. Now, imagine if you have another bike here. It might be a little harder to reach. We'd probably be skeeting underneath that kind of wheel right there, pulling that like so, and dropping this down. Keep in mind, if you have two 40-pound bikes up on here, definitely going to be adding a little bit of weight. So just be careful as we pull it off. But as you can see, I can pop here, open up this hatch, and I have a ton of room to actually get inside my vehicle. Now I can get those bike helmets, coolers, anything I might need. can be a quick, little easy way to start changing your boots to it or your shoes as you are sitting there. Great little access that we can actually get to the back of our cargo. Especially in the Volvo, that's a pretty good job, even with those back seats up, of giving us a lot of room. So you definitely want to have that as an option for ourselves. To bring it back up is even easier. I just support it. It's going to go ahead, lock itself in place. No pins and clips that I have to worry about. And we are already ready to get moving in no time at all. Well, to take our bike off isn't going to take much time. I just want to come ahead and pop this strip on the back end like so. Pressing that lever allows this ratchet and strap to go. Nothing too crazy on these guys. They do have a little bit of matting on the inside just to prevent any kind of damage to our, to our wheel rims as we have it there. Before I get the bike off too, I want to note that we are pretty much inside of our taillights here. Volvo does a good job of putting them on the other ends. That way we don't actually be covering it. A couple things to keep in mind too is our backup camera is a little bit more offset towards our passenger side. So if I were you, you know, just keep in mind if you have a lot of gear housing on your bikes, it's just something to consider. And we'll be kind of sitting right there on that passenger side at least for our closest bike. Now, I always recommend kind of getting this arm out of the way, especially if you, you, know, you are pushing that 40 pound limit, because this does bring us to our last contact point on our bike. We don't want that tilting in our vehicle ourselves, so let's make sure we have a good firm hand on it. And all I have to do to release it is press in on that button, bring our arm like so, and push it off to the side. And then grabbing our bike, lift straight off, and we are ready to ride. So mounting it, almost even easier. All we have to do is walk it up, the only issue you might have is this strip kind of getting your way. It's really easy to dip your wheel underneath there, get it set, and get us moving. These arms take no time at all to collapse, as you guys can see. I can walk up and just simply push right down, 
get them off to the side and they're good to go. And of course that front wheel cradle can do a good job of pulling back in. I actually am a big fan of the cradle too. It actually does a very good job. Even if you had a slightly longer um, bike, you know, and you're kind of hanging off a little bit on the end here, what's great is we have that nice little stopper here. We won't worry about the bike rolling off even as we press down on our ratcheting arm system. Well, with any hitch mounted accessory, we are gonna be adding a little bit of length to our vehicle. Now the Volvo isn't necessarily the shortest, nor is it the longest vehicle. So it's definitely something we wanna keep in mind. From the rear of our bumper here to the very end of our platform it is gonna be putting me right at, if I can get it to quit following that curve on the vehicle, 32 and a half inches to the very end of that post. So definitely a little length that we wanna consider. However, we have a way of quickly shortening that down, whether we need to pull in some tight parking places or if we wanna get in this in the garage without having to take our carrier off. That brings us right back to our lever system here. So to do that, again, we're just simply gonna pull that towards us. And instead of walking down, I'm gonna walk the Sherpa up into its standing position like this. As you can see, very little play here. I am a big fan of Kuat and how well the dub they do with their modular system of that, being able to move and not have any kind of play in it. One thing to note too, these arms have a very good resistance, so it takes me quite a lot to actually move those away from it. So we won't have any kind of like, you know, accidental bumps as we get on the road, since it has a good resistance, won't be worried about this making contact with our Volvo. Talking about it though, let's go ahead and see how close we are from the rear of our bumper on the inside here four and one quarter inches to our closest point from our bumper and to our farthest point is right under 15. So about 14 and three quarter inches to the end of our anti-rattle device there. So definitely shaving down a ton of that space as you guys can see. And one quick thing that I actually do wanna point out, another very important dimension is our clearance factor. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back into position. And to show it off, I just wanna show you guys that this lever in this position, very, very easy to access. All I have to do, press down with my foot. I can bring it right towards me. That can be great if you're like me and you don't have a bike stand. That way I can hold onto my bike and just walk it right up, bring it down, and now I can start loading it up. But a great clearance to keep in mind here is gonna to be to the ground in this position as our bikes will be carried here. So I'm gonna go ahead and from the bottom of our platform to the top of the ground puts us right at 18 and three quarter inches. So that is very well up and out of the way. Don't think we're gonna have any issues with it. Now, if you were to take this off-roading, let's just be careful as those front wheels go up, the back will go down. So it's just something to keep in the back of our minds. Moving our way down the shank here, though, you guys can see that we do have a two-inch shank today. That makes it great for our two-inch hitches, gonna give us a lot of nice stability as well. And on the inside too, you can see we just have a little alignment pin. And this does a great job of just holding this in here, making sure we are nice and aligned and where we wanna be. On the end too, we do have that locking core. So it serves <laughs> as a great little security element to make sure that our rack stays to our vehicle when we leave it unattended. And keep in mind too, that will be key to light exactly to our other locking core that is on our main platform there for that cable lock that comes with it. That brings us to our anti-rattle device here. And on the very end, you'll see this little knob and you can see how tight it is. What's happening with this guys, we do have a cam on the inside of our shank, which is tightening it to our receiver. And that way, as I shake this guy, as you guys can see, it's actually shaking the entirety of the vehicle. So that way we know we're taking a lot of the play out. We're not gonna be feeling it as much. Our bike's not gonna be feeling it as much. Neither is our bike rack, making for a nice smooth ride for all involved. One great thing about that anti-rattle too on the inside, it is tool free. So when we are just ready to go on those weekends, we just go ahead and tighten that down with our hands. However, if you have a very long road trip, I definitely recommend grabbing an Allen wrench and really giving a couple more torques. That way we won't have to be adjusting them as we go for those really, really long rides. Well, the Sherpa is an excellent bike rack and for a lot of reasons, right? I think the style really speaks for itself as you guys can hopefully see. However, you're not sacrificing on that stability and what you are actually paying for. You're getting a great platform that's gonna do a good job of moving your lightweight bikes to where you wanna be. Again, if you need that higher capacity, I recommend checking out the Kuat Envy if you like this style. But I think that about does it for our look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 here on our 2020 Volvo XC90. I'm Bobby, thank you for watching. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps. And we can see here the up and down action 
and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway. So we can see here how the bike rack moves with our truck.